In this video, let's talk about some recent updates from Flux regarding their decentralized storage platform, also known as Project Thunder. If you've been following the channel or you know me personally, you know that I've been involved in decentralized storage since around 2017. Uh, back then, it was a lot of SIA and storage, and it has kind of evolved over time. And one of the things I was really excited about from Flux was their implementation for decentralized storage. Uh, the idea is if you're running a service node, add some hard drive space, and you could get, earn additional incentives for renting out your storage. And unfortunately, they did release some information that has made me, you know, very concerned with uh, how it's going to be used. And more importantly, they're really bottlenecking themselves. So I want to just show you guys uh, kind of the requirements. So it's the equivalent of a cumulus node. So you need a thousand flux, two cores, four threads, eight gigs of RAM. You need 240 EPS combined. Uh, so it's 60 EPS for a single thread with this bench. Uh, 9.2 terabytes of storage, um, which is basically the formatted version of like a 10 terabyte hard drive. And you can do um, LVM, or you can so you can do any software RAID or hardware RAID you want. And you only need 80 megabytes of disk rate speed. So those are all good numbers. This is the downfall, right? 100 megabits per second download and upload speed. So if we compare that to typical nodes, that is their highest tier node um, transfer speed. <clears throat> and, you know, if other projects were requiring this, okay, I could kind of understand, um, you know, there's a need for it. However, there isn't a need for this type of speed. So if we jump over to, I'm just going to walk through a couple of these projects. So storage has been around for a very long time. And if we look over here, the recommended is 100, right? That's the ideal for everybody. However, the minimum is only 5 megabits per second upload and 25 megabits per second download. I've been running on storage for a very long time. Never had a problem. Um... I do have decent speeds. I have business class um, through AT&T, and my download and upload is consistently around 90 down and 90 up for the most part. It fluctu the down fluctuates at anywhere between 80 and 90, but typically it's a solid at least 75 constant. And so this 100 is just insane to me. Uh, stepping on over, let's take a look at SC Prime. So SC Prime is another one <clears throat> that is really popular as of late. Uh, this is a fork of Saya. And for them, they said they don't have any hard requirements for network speeds. But typically internet plans with 100 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload are a good place to start. So what they're saying is, they don't really care what their internet speed is, as long as it's decent. In fact, their recommended uploads only 20. Obviously, they want, you know, they want 100 down. But, again, that 20 upload, very minimal. And if we hop over to Saya, they actually don't even have any requirements. Right, for network speed. All of their requirements are more for collateral, um, storage space, uh, you have to have, I think they require at least four terabytes if I'm not mistaken, uh, for a given node, but most theirs is driven around uptime. And so this is really disappointing to me seeing this. You know, I was really excited to build a storage node on Flux. In fact, I even covered a video previously the server that I actually bought 
that I was going to run Flux uh, storage node on. And unfortunately now I won't be. So I will be moving. Um, I, actually I'll probably be taking that chassis and spinning up an additional storage node. So the nice thing with storage is you can run as many of these on your network as you want. You're not limited to how many you can run. Uh, they allow you to configure the ports so you can run basically as many as you want. Same thing with SC Prime. You can run as many providers behind your IP as you want. And keep in mind with SC Prime, they do have a relayer. Uh, they're only going to send so much data to your IP. So just keep that in mind. It's really regional based with their relayer. But that's, you know, that's a big downfall. So what I think I'm going to do, I actually have three of those Quanta S51 chassis. And I'm going to be run. I'm already running SE Prime on one. And I'm running storage on another one. I think I'm going to remove my flux node off of the third one. That's where my cumulus node's already running. And I'm going to convert that, I think, to an additional storage node. So I'm running storage on a Windows box. I'm running it on one of those Quanta chassis. I think I'm also going to run it on that Flux chassis and just give up on the Flux decentralized storage. Uh, I really think this is a bad decision on their part. Um, you know, I understand their, that they want consistent bandwidth and maybe something on, you know, 35 to 50 down up consistent, which is still pretty high for, you know, that data should be getting fragmented. They shouldn't be storing full files on your systems, right? It should be fragments that get spread across multiple nodes. Maybe they're not doing that. Maybe they're just storing each file as a copy and not, you know, not encrypting and splitting it. I don't know. They haven't released any type of technical specs on, you know, how they're actually handling it from a code standpoint but you know i really think this is gonna be a downfall for their storage notes uh, to the point where yeah it's going to be good to use it but not good to provide that as a service um, unfortunately that's kind of where we're at especially if they want you know home miners uh, to do this it's really in my opinion, this is going to result in Flux becoming more centralized, especially their storage side, where it's going to be running in data centers and not, you know, not running on people's home networks, which it's good and bad, right? They get the, they get the uptime consistency. Uh, typically with data centers, you don't have to worry about that too much um, versus, you know, People at home like to tinker with their servers, and you might have consistent or inconsistent uptime, rather. And so I kind of understand where they're coming from from that standpoint. But to me, this requirement for 100 megabits per second down and up is just way too much. It's way overkill. It's not needed um, unless they're trying to do something on the fly on the network and they're not compressing the files or they're not, you know, chunking them. I, it's the only reason I could think of why they would need that type of bandwidth requirement. One thing to keep in mind with Flux is the benchmarking runs like every 30 minutes. And so if, you, if you're on that verge, like I'm really close to that, right? I'm at like 90 megabits per second. If I even tried turning everything off that I had still sitting at 90 right i have a lot of network sharing programs running on nodes i turned all those off just for a little bit ran speed tests still sitting at 90 on the internet side and so if you fail that benchmark you know you're you're going to become um you're going to drop off just like you would with a regular node you're going to drop off you're not going to get any incentives for it and you're probably going to get disqualified from the network, uh, that specific node. So I think it's a really bad move. Uh, but just wanted to throw this video out and kind of show you guys a quick comparison to some of the other platforms and how they don't restrict that bandwidth that much, right? Um, 
you know, it's, some of them will say, um, that the actual bandwidth itself, not the transfer speed, but the total bandwidth, um, if it's metered, you know, you want at least two terabytes of, uh, bandwidth per month, things like that. That's understandable because some people do run on metered connections, but this is a massive difference, right? If we just take the upstream, five megabits to hundred megabits, crazy. But that's it for this video, guys. Just wanted to drop this out there, show you the comparison, and let you formulate your own, um, you know, decision on whether you want to go with it or not. Uh, let me know if you guys do have this internet speed that you're capable of. I know some people that might have fiber as an option. That, you know, that might be something that you could do. But them essentially relying on everybody having a top tier internet speed just to run this uh, storage node, I think is a really bad idea. I think it's going to start to centralize Flux more than it already is. And I think we're moving in the wrong direction with this. Drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts.